All right, welcome back to Off the Tap. This week is episode 50. We did it. And this week we're doing Stesty Brewing Company's Tractor Juice. Hey, real quick though, on the 50, like that one snuck up on us. Like we've been talking about it's right around the corner. And let, I hope that this is killer because I feel like the 50th beer should be. I know we always want it to be a surprise. That's the whole intent. But I was hoping, I hope the one on the 50th slams because I picked last week's and this week's. And let's be honest, I'm batting less than 50%, even though we haven't cracked the second one. That's how rough week one was. Well, hey, listen, two weeks ago was pretty was pretty bad for us, too. So what was the two week ago? Uh, we had we've had some some rough ones back to back. Um Two weeks ago was the, well, no, it the okay the tiny bomb was two weeks ago. It was good. It just wasn't a pilsner. That's yeah, why the ratings that's, were lower. I okay. Let me just put it in perspective here. It's been a whole week since we recorded last. Let's say or give or take a few days here or there. Um, mm -hmm. The chocolate peanut butter um, porter is safe at the right household. That sucker has not moved a square inch. The last remaining one of what I had left has not changed its location since we recorded and it's been over a week uh, of which yeah. there was a weekend in there for me to rightfully consume it as I do with everything else that's left over from week to week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine's mine's still in there as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure I really don't know and I don't care where what's where it is, but uh, if, it, if it went missing, I wouldn't even hate like this, a certain individual that took it. Like I would not judge would, my friends at all. If I would, if feel anything, bad. I would, Oh, I would feel terrible for them. Just like we talked about last week. Like I need to leave it as a decoy. Somebody sneaks it out and takes it home. And then I can laugh to myself as they are forced to finish it. Or well, it out. if you didn't watch last week's episode or listen to last week's episode, <laughs> now you know how we felt about it. Uh, but go listen to it anyways. Go that was the equivalent. That was equivalent of the, you know, since you saw last or what are the intros whenever you watch a show? last time on oh, yeah. and then that was the clip yeah right okay yeah so this is the uh the tractor juice from stesty brewing company um coming in at a 3.7 percent which Ooh. is the lowest percentage beer i think i've ever had uh that's like heineken light i've never i've never had a heineken light i've had a heineken or i know we know uh, heineken's like five percent i think a heineken light's like three five or three seven um What's that fake Bud Light stuff that we drank that one oh, time? Oh, we yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, I know this goes against everything that I preach yeah. because I hate Bud Light. I can't stand it. But uh, we did try their like what I don't even remember what it was called. It came in like the skinny, uh, the skinny seltzer can style. Yeah, it was like negative cards. Like it's you like... drink it and it takes carbs away from you or some shit. <laughs> yeah, it was like Bud Zero or something like that. I don't know. It yeah, horrible, I'll Google though. it. In a but uh, let's hope this has more flavor because if this comes in at yeah. more flavor, sc screw the carb count at three seven. It's going to be light, but uh, hopefully mm -hmm. it packs a little more of a punch than that. Yeah, so three point seven percent ABV and twelve IBUs, so pretty low on that scale as well. But that's pretty, pretty normal for a, a pilsner, I think. Yeah. Um, it is a a, a Czech pilsner. Uh. So this should be right up your alley. This is also what the tiny bomb was supposed to be, though. So yeah, this um, was I'm a little nervous about that. Um, um, real quick, before we get into the rest of the details, I will say that it is unfiltered. So I don't think all Stesty Stesties are. Um, man, that's a mouthful that could get you in trouble if you were in public yeah, saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Stesties, all not all not, Stesties are filtered. Fuck, not all Stesties are a mouthful, man. <laughs> you know, not, what all I mean? Stes not all Stesties pack this salty punch, <laughs> but we're gonna see. It's really so low hanging fruit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty that my my pun cup not runneth over at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it is unfiltered, um, keep cold, and it's best if shared. And that might be because it's delicious, and it might be because one person can't stand to finish a single can. <laughs> this, we don't know yet. Fair. It is branded pretty much exactly as you would picture. It's the John Deere colors, because you can't go wrong with uh, the old classic green and yellow. Um, oh, yeah. And there's even tractors on the little, like on the rim of the can. So I really like that. I think that, oh, yeah. it's like it's like clip art, you know, it's not it like is. anything fancy. Yeah, I think maybe an elementary school did like a little uh, uh, contest to see who was going to print the can, and this guy won. Yeah, but I kind of like it. Like, it's, that's not a bad yeah. thing, I don't think. I think it's fun. No, 
it keeps everything keeps keeps the mood light, such as the beer itself. Right. Yeah. Um, based out of Love Lady Texas, uh, um, and a traditional old world brewing Texas style. I don't know if that's a uh, oxymoronic or not, but it's old world, but Texas as well. I know we like to think of ourselves as the only country from the start of time. However, um, that's not necessarily the case. Well, to be fair, we were the only state that was our own country at one point. But that's that's, that's something else, you know. Maybe Let's maybe see. that's from the brewing. That's that's the old times they're talking about. Was whenever we were our own country. So the old world country style brewing. Yeah. And this is where you plug in the background, like somebody just whispering, like a group of uh, like backup singers. Sissy, sissy. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. No. Um, at least not now. No. Uh, I'm going to get in and taste it, man. Yeah, me I'm, too. I'm pretty I'm excited like, about it. I'm hoping it's refreshing. I'm going to give a little color here. You can see some. I don't know if you can see the cloud. You can't really see it, but there's a cloud that's in it that's dissipating. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's a little it almost, cloudy. You know how like uh, on a hot day, like when you look at the road, there's like those heat waves that are coming off the road. That's kind of what's going on inside the bo- uh, inside the glass right now. Yeah. It has a hell of a head on it, though. It's thin. Ooh. Listen. Um, mm. Mm. You know what it tastes like to me? If you don't like it, you don't have to like it. That's oh, your prerogative. I, I, no, no, no. I, I think it's good. You I, know what it tastes like to me? It doesn't. It also, again, doesn't taste like a Pilsner to me, though. It tastes a, like a, a sour. Little, a little bit. Yes. It tastes more like a sour to me than a, than a Pilsner. It, it tastes very much like a sour. Um, I actually like it surprisingly. Oh yeah. But I can I can tell that it's like a, a yeah, not in a bad way, but it's like you ever had <laughs> you ever squeeze like a lemon into a water and then you let that water like all the ice melt in it and it come to room temperature. Yes. That's what it tastes like to me, but also sour beer like that. I know that people are gonna be like, oh, that's a terrible taste like that like. You're painting a negative image. I enjoy that because there's like the oils from the lime and I mean the lemon in the glass. And I don't know, there's a souriness to it that I actually like. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, it, it, I, I love sours though. So it's kind of hard to sway me away from that kind of flavor. I'm going to tell you this one also, it sticks in the back of the nose. Like you, you're going to wear it. Like this is one of those beers that even though it's light, you're wearing this scent for a while. Like what's going on oh, in my yeah. mouth and my breath right now. Yeah. Yeah. This, it, yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know what? There is a little bit of skunkiness to it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of nice. They're kind of, it. it's like, a, it's like a little, it, it is like, I, like lemon peel ish, right? Like flavor wise, I think. Yeah. Like, like the oils of that, uh, I don't know what, uh, I should know this, but like the white shit that's underneath the peel between the lemon and the, um, the skin. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, like, there's the, the, the rind, and then that white film that I'm going to Google in a second. Like, you know how when it's you like, peel an orange, but it's not ready to peel, and so all that yeah. white shit's on the outside, and it takes forever, and then you get it wet, and then it's spongy, and you can't fucking get it off of there? Yeah. That's the stuff that it tastes like. It's like the equivalent. It's it's a fruit's snake skin. You know, yeah. It's like gotta, it's got to shed off a little bit. Uh, it's kind of like, yeah, dude. It's, I, I do really enjoy it, though. I do too. I want to know what's creating that that taste. I wish I knew. Um, so it uses a recipe date. Oh, did we talk about? I don't want to spill the beans, but oh no, go um, for it. It's pre prohibition, so it's a light pilsner that comes from a recipe pre prohibition. So they use a recipe dating from the late eighteen hundreds. This pilsner is light and softly hopped with saws for easy drinking. Gonna have to Google that. I don't know what saws is. Maybe that's what they mean by old world, though. Is pre pre prohibition. I don't know. I got a little bit of the burps too coming out already. Oh yeah, the burps have already started for me, and they're not bad burps. No, uh, so this is they're, they're very good. This is one of the, this is one of those situations where like I was not expecting this to come out of that can, but I'm a fan. Yes, I agree. Uh, it definitely took me by surprise. It, I'll tell you what, it's not something that I would imagine somebody driving a tractor would be drinking. No, it's a it it's not. a lot more crafty than than I think some of, you know, it here's the look. I love when they if we're if we're lost on branding, I love when they enlighten us. 
It says this is this brew is dedicated to those early Czech immigrants to Texas, mostly farmers. They settled in small communities throughout this great state. Cheers to the souls lucky enough to commute to work on a tractor. Ah, okay. So we were having wow. a little bit of a discussion beforehand, which we'll we'll kind of touch on later. But that's interesting. I, lo I love with our, our random pathway to topics how they we never get them to tie in, and this just kind of fell in place. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. Uh, yeah. Um, so it's pre-prohibition. That's pretty crazy to think about. I mean, recipe wise. <clears throat> For Texas specifically, um, only because, like, I mean, obviously we've had beers that were brewed overseas, like, in the 1500s or whatever. I mean, not from that original batch, but of the style of the 1500s. Right. They've just been around forever. Um, but I would say for a, a Texas brew, staying true to, like, a a recipe from here in the 1800s is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. I also, I'm wondering now if it was, like, a... Uh... Well, first of all, how long Stesty Brewing Company has been around, but or if this uh, uh, if this recipe was more of like a, you know, just like a recipe that a dude had, you know, I would like imagine like so. Recipe. Stesty kind of stays true to the Czech. I, I would imagine immigration. I mean, the yeah, the immigration movement of the Czechs. Um, I don't know if that's historically like Love Lady. Um, like if Love Lady is a, a huge Czech town, we'd have to kind of look that up. I've had some other Stesties, <laughs> but I've never been like super into them. Um, like Usually I mean, I've only never... like to have my own Stesties, but yeah, like a buddy gave me some of his Stesties one time, and they weren't the best. Uh, and you know, I haven't reached out to anybody else to try their Stesties, so I'm gonna be honest. This is this one's delicious. I would definitely go back for seconds. I, I would take a full bag of these testies. Do you remember the other one that you had by chance? I'm it was like a gray. It was a gray can. Was uh, it the Bohemian Lager? Uh, I'll Google it right now. Saws, by the way, refers to the type of hops. It's okay. named after a Czech, Czech town, Zatek, I imagine. It's extensively used in the Bohemian flavor style of Czech Pilsners. So it's mm -hmm. native to the Pilsner style. Interesting. Um, it, what, the whole, the whole, like, uh, I mean, obviously we weren't, we're not around for prohibition and stuff. Right. But it, that whole era just seems absolutely wild to me. Like, well, th that they were just like, nope, no more alcohol. It's crazy because there like was a point in time where it wasn't a problem. You know, like obviously there was people consuming alcohol for years and years. And then finally they were like, Hey, no more alcohol. So that was kind of like an extreme thing because there was never a time where we were like the United States or anywhere, to my knowledge, was like heroin, completely cool. And they were like, wait a second, we need to put a stop to this heroin. And right. So then they out. Yeah, you know, it's not that situation. So it's like a way of life, essentially, that immediately was just ripped away. So that's crazy for one thing. The second thing that I think of all the time is like, look, think about the things we bitch about today when we're like. Just yeah. like, oh, so I can't smoke weed in an airport now. Well, the next thing you know, they're going to be, we're, we're a communist country. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's just ridiculous. And so uh, someone coming up and saying, like, you can't drink beer, even though, like, every human being on the planet's done it recreationally for their entire lives all of a sudden. Yeah. That seems crazy. It's really weird so to me. Yeah, there's no way that we would go through something like a prohibition that seems as simple as a prohibition nowadays. Well, I've seen uh, some people talking on on the Twitter sphere, on the interwebs, um, about how like over the you know over the last like decade, I guess, kind of, you know, all these restaurants and stuff have kind of gone away from like having smoking sections and stuff in their restaurants, and you have to smoke outside because yeah. people just don't want to be like consumed by the smoke and the you know and the air and stuff, and now they're you know these same people are getting a little upset because of the vaping right because yeah. like we finally got the smoking out of the building and now you're just vaping all around me and you know i mean I, it's it's not as bad as tobacco i guess but it is still kind of intrusive you know i, I mean i can understand yeah and i think the argument could be made too not that we're gonna go down this rabbit hole any farther or, or beat this dead horse or string this pinata or whatever other analogy you want to use <laughs> But I, 
I don't think that, like the intent with prohibition. I don't really know a lot about it, but I think that the the intent was. I don't know if it was it was of religious reasons potentially. So there, like, there was protection Maybe. of religion. Um, but secondly, like, I understand why they outlaw. Like, I don't really care one way or the other. Like, just don't go to that place if you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's I, how agree. I, feel about I agree. Yeah, but it is ultimately to protect like the health of the masses. And like, I could see how prohibition could have been something like that. Like, obviously, back then, there probably wasn't nearly as many car accidents related to alcohol or uh, I guess loosely, I could use the term domestic abuse. Like, I don't know all of the things that alcohol was causing back in the day, but I don't think it was done for that reason, like the same reason that we police cigarettes or uh recreational drugs and things like that for the health of kind of the masses because of what comes with it. I don't think that was the intent. I think it was a taxation thing, wasn't it? I don't know. It was probably, uh, I think it had to do with taxes because it was unregulated. Yeah. Like I think a lot of so, the alcohol was unregulated. And so they were just like, nope, no more until we have control of it. Which like, why don't they, look, listen, I'm not a pot smoker, but why don't they do it with weed? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, they, they, I think they're coming to that realization. Like it's, they're, they're getting to the point where, we can tax it. We can police the way that it's manufactured. Also, right. I would I would say a lot quicker than beer. Like, think about, you know, we preach week in and week out about, like, the volume of awesome craft beers that are out there. And just anything and anything and everything, even if it's a chocolate peanut butter porter, if that's what you're into, like, it's out there and somebody's doing it. But they're also doing it with the utmost care, right, to tradition. Right. And because of safety and like the mm -hmm. quality metrics, even if it's a shit beer, it's spot on quality wise week by week. Right. And and that's what's happening, I think, way or like now that's what the way that they treat beer. But for years, I'm sure it was sketchy back and alcohol. I'm sure it was real sketchy back then because there was no regulation. Yeah. But I would say the the folks that are really part of the cannabis movement, like they came out of the gate. It's been underground forever. They're coming out of the gates with like extreme safety, extreme control, extreme right. quality, just because like anybody can get generic ass trash weed somewhere. They've been doing it for years undercover. Like if you want to come out and be legit, you got to have like you got to have your shit in order. Do um, right. Just to answer a question that I that I asked earlier myself, I guess it is the Bohemian Lager, the Stesty that I had. Okay, and you yeah. didn't like that one. Not a big fan of that Stesty. I'm gonna be honest, but I, you know, I think it was also kind of like it was like uh, the can was sweaty. It was a sweaty Stesty, so I wasn't like a big fan of it. <laughs> it's kind of slippery a little bit. Yeah, lukewarm. Nobody likes a lukewarm Stesty in your hand, you know. Right. Right. Um, I think another funny thing that came out of prohibition was, uh, the, the whole, um, I mean, like that's how NASCAR originated, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Like stock cars shiners. or whatever. By the way, way off topic, but did you see that dude that gave the full NASCAR interview? <laughs> no. Oh God. I can't think of his name. I think he played for the Braves. Or maybe it was the Angels, but they were like, hey, the guy, the interviewer was like, hey, when do you decide that you're going to pull a triple? And he goes, well, I really want to give a shout out to the uh, the Jim Beam car today. I mean, he really kept the team together. We came into pit and it was a little bit rough making it around turn two. But thankfully, Bud Light was able to scoop up the gap. Mary Kay slid right in. So we really just want to thank the team that was in the pit. And literally, <laughs> the interviewer just was like, what? And he went on for like probably 45 seconds of just straight spit and NASCAR slang. And then the guy was like, uh, I do want to make you aware that you played the sport of baseball. And then I didn't see where the interview went after that. Like it was on like top. So the, the yeah. interview cut, but it was hilarious. Like real time post game. They were like, when do you decide to make it a triple? And then he just kind of like second nature went into this rant on NASCAR and it was killer. That's pretty funny. But um, yes, NASCAR was a result of prohibition. Yeah, because they were they were racing the stock cars or whatever they're called through the through the streets for moonshine, or Correct. delivering moonshine and stuff. But it you know well now that I'm now that I'm saying it, it doesn't really surprise me as much. But it is kind of funny that that are, that came out of the prohibition because like you go to a NASCAR a NASCAR race now and everybody's hammered. That's right. You know what I mean? So like taking the beer away from us only wanted it more, only made us want it more. You know what I mean? You think we drive, yeah, we drive fast, but we also do it lit up. That's yeah. kind of their MO. Now, now we are driving drunk. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just a way to basically get away from the coppers. 
which I believe also originates from that particular time period. I could be wrong. Cops? But you know what? Check me. No, oh, calling them coppers. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I know that calling them pigs was, was skater culture, so. Whoa. Whoa, man. You just draw those lines in the sand, just throwing hey, down listen, the hard I, I, I don't the use it. On the, P, the, the emphasis on the P seemed a little extreme, too. Like, maybe it's you like use a, it in average conversation on the There's daily. a little bit of resentment behind that P. Just a little bit. It was hard P. Now listen, yeah, I like, got some cop friends. That's just that's just a that's just a term that I know was used. I mean, I saw it in uh, in uh, what the Lords of Dogtown. I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I yeah, dude, I'll, I'll support you, but like, I'm gonna have to do it from a distance. <laughs> we got to be careful out here. Can't be can't be getting canceled on episode fifty. Ooh, but that you know really I mean? would be a cake topper, wouldn't it? It would be. It would be the cherry on top, wouldn't it? Um. So yeah. Uh extreme to think about prohibition it's just a weird time especially for you know how i kind of think i mean i'm not saying that it, it's relatable but think about like uh i don't know when it was if it was the 70s maybe or 80s when like they were like hey you can't drink when you're 18 any longer and there were all those kids that were 18 already drinking yeah and they were like now you gotta wait till you're 21 and so like, I think they moved it to 21 and then they moved it back down to 18. So that group that was in between was like, hey, what the hell? Yeah. Like, so my dad was part of that group. He was actually telling yeah. us this story uh, this this weekend, how like he went through three different age requirements to be able to drink. And it was like 18, 20 and then 21. And yeah. it was each he like turned 18. And then like three months later, they cut it off and were like, no, you have to be 20. And then he turned 20. Same thing, 21, same thing. Well, no, I mean, not after 21, but... I mean, based on where he grew up, I don't think that it really slowed anyone down, to be honest with you. But, <laughs> yeah. sec but secondly, like, think about how trippy that is. Like, if a cop came to me at that point... Like, there were people... There were probably probably very innocent people. That, like, cops were coming to him. They're like, how did you get this drink? You're underage. And they're like, really? Am I? And they're like, yeah. Don't you know you have to be 20? And they were like, well, it was 18, like, two months ago. And then now you're 20. And they're like, don't you have to be 21? And you're like, stop fucking with me, dude. You did yeah. this to me last time. You know yeah, I mean? that, that person got they got pulled over twice for that. And he was like, dude, stop. You yeah, gotta be kidding me right now. Give me a break, you know? Good yeah. lord with the I rules. I couldn't imagine, man. That would be very confusing. <laughs> Big time confusing. Yeah, so it wasn't a prohibition per se, but it was a prohibition of sorts for a very small sample set of people yeah. between the age of 18 and 21. We're talking about people that were born from like 1962 to 1964. Also, too, think about this, man. I don't. I think this was like by by county, too, or state or something. This wasn't even like a widespread thing, the whole age thing. I don't know. I know that it was in the county that our parents grew up in, though. Yeah. Or counties that our parents grew up in. Can, can you? Oh, yeah. Also, I just can't imagine, like, the, I don't know. Like, if the, I don't know. I was just thinking about, like, the federal <laughs> government, like, trying to regulate. Like, I can't believe they actually pulled off prohibition. Because I don't know if you've ever been to somewhere like Kentucky. But if there's a group of people that give no shits about anything that somebody tells them to do, it's Virginians, Virginians or Kentuckians. The virgins and Kentuckians. Virginians. Yeah, they just don't care. They're like, oh, the federal government is here. And they said, what? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much what prohibition was. They yeah, stopped it. And there was a mass group of people that were like, ha, I don't think so. Yeah. Good try, bro, buddy. Good try, buddy. I think it's one of those situations where the federal government launched it and then they were like, hey, nobody's paying attention. And they were like, yeah, we're not going to do that. And they were like, yeah, all right, well, we'll just give up on that then yeah nobody's do nobody's doing it dang it yeah and then they just gave up because how long did it like it didn't last very long did it uh, i was during the twi i don't know it was like a five uh, maybe 10 years straight i feel like we if we were going to go down this damn long, hole, honestly oh uh, it might have been longer than, than that that's pretty wild i uh i don't know that was i i would be pretty upset if if the government took my beer away from me uh, I'm not, I mean, like, how... this makes me sound like an alcoholic, but I'm not, you know, I enjoy drinking a couple beers, man. Dude, um, 13 years nationwide prohibition lasted from 1920 until 1933. 
The 18th Amendment, which illegalized the manufacture, transportation, and sale of alcohol, was passed by the U.S. Congress in 1917. So they did give it like three years to take effect. We have problems as a country on the fact alone that that didn't start a war against the government. Well, I we, think we've had we've had wars on so many other stupid stuff. I think they basically were just like nobody was doing it. Oh, you know what's funny? Uh, they basically it, it, the Great Depression is the turning point for when they just reversed it. Basically, is when they started it. They were like, "Look, the world's falling to shit. You guys go get drunk." Like that's basically what was happening. <laughs> and then look what happened to the have, world. It recovered. It did. They, the legalized alcohol triggered a groundswell of political support for repeal and for Roosevelt as a president. <laughs> Dude, can what you a platform to run on, huh? Okay, so again, I don't want to go too deep here or anything like that, but like think about all of the social things that are that I disagree with that are not I don't disagree with any of this, the actual things themselves. I just don't like the fact that they're tied to our politics. But yeah. think about all the social things that are going on right now that are so deeply rooted in our political decisions. And I always used to be like, oh, this was never this way in the past. Obviously, I was wrong. They just weren't <laughs> fighting about the same things. They were just like, give us our beer back or we're not voting for you. Bud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want our votes? Give me alcohol. This is what I want. Dude, somebody up in Minnesota or Wisconsin was like, I don't think so, bud. <laughs> We're going to need the beers back and then maybe we'll talk about it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Got off on that one. But um, there's a certain amount of value, I think, that alcohol in that time brought back to the economy. So it was like um, the the world was falling apart economically. We needed a change in presidential folks. And they were like, how can we get everybody on board, make them happy, not want to, you know, in their lives and support the economy? And they were like, legalize beer again. A lot of value in that. Yeah, beer, liquor in general, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when – so the Great Depression – was because of inflation, right? Uh, or no, it was, the stock, it was the stock market. Stock market crash. Yeah. yeah. But did that, was that because of inflation? Uh, no, because that was basically artificial money that existed oh. within the system and everybody called on said money and there was no money there to redistribute. So there was a crumble. So that's when they started printing money. Uh, I mean, no, I don't, I don't yes, remember no. when, like, I don't remember when the first big uh, inflation inflationary inflation infl inflationary period was i would have given up on that one a lot earlier than you did thanks for sticking it out though inflation it? it sounded like you were sounding it out i was i had the letters going across my like my eyes and my head you know like that meme Gee, of uh of so, the dude from the hangover where he's uh where he, yeah he's like yeah. playing uh playing blackjack or whatever and there's all the numbers around him that was yeah. me but it was just the word inflationary <laughs> <laughs> uh it might be inflationary i would have to look that up but uh as soon as i start struggling like that i just go period of inflation that's how i would fix that problem yeah i don't I i'm not like that it. i'm gonna push through and try to create new words man that's what i do power to you um oh yeah you are the uh the the trend setter, the trailblazer of new terminology yeah. but yeah um there was probably other inflationary i mean obviously both wars uh i know world war ii was afterwards but um Earlier, I'm sure during the World War One, there was an inflationary period either before or after. Um, uh, not to the likes that we've seen like later on, not like that little blip that happened in the 80s and or 70s. And then obviously 2008 and then what we're experiencing now. Yeah, I mean, now it's it's getting pretty crazy now, or at least in, you know, in, in some areas, it's getting pretty crazy. Which, you know what, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in there. I mentioned to you, like, inflation has touched every single part of this freaking world. And it doesn't matter what it is. Like, everything's blowing up in price. Unless you partake in the famous Cajun Grill at the mall. Because those bastards are still giving you 18 pounds of just fiction, yeah. you know, fictitious chicken and shitty spaghetti noodles. And it's still the same $9 that somebody in 96 was paying. It's yeah. outrageous how they've overcome. I don't know what their model is financially, but they're saying, fuck you, inflation. That's essentially should be their motto at this point. Yeah. I, I and I don't think that's uh mall specific. I think uh, it, that's, there's one of those, one of those food chains in every mall in America. 
probably yeah, in the world. Can, it probably not even in just America, but inflation wise, we're talking about just America. No, that's fine. But and what I think is so interesting about it is, yeah, I don't know. It's got to be all under the same brand name, but it could be like I've seen a uh, Royal Cricket Walk. I've seen Famous Cajun Grill. I've seen um, Famous Walk. Uh, famous, walk. famous Walk. I've I've seen a uh, Japanese Grill Walk. Whatever they are, it's the same spaghetti noodles in some type of molasses, and then bourbon chicken. And pineapple chicken for some reason. I don't know why it's orange. Maybe that's a trademark thing that Panda's got going on. But it's the same stuff. Anyways, they're taking a, a container that's capable of holding five pounds, putting eight pounds in it, and charging you $9. Don't get the drink. That's where you get into the $12, $14, yeah, $16 yeah. rank because you had a $5 soda. But it's just crazy to me that I remember paying that same price you know, as a teenager and that's many years past now. And even when inflation's upon us, Chick-fil-A, again, love the organization, but you're getting chicken tendies right next door. It's $13 for like 12 of them. And I can go get six chickens in a five styrofoam box with 50 pounds of napkins and a half gallon of soy sauce. And it's $9. I'm just, yeah. it's just mind blowing yeah. to me. In fact, the deals were so incredible. I remember vividly. Now, I don't know if this would really, uh, well, maybe it'd be it'd be still pretty uh, cost effective to do this, but we would drive from, you know, from our town about thirty minutes to the mall, thirty five minutes, just to eat lunch there, and then drive back because oh, it was dude. it was like five bucks to get so it was five bucks for two meals because you I mean yeah. if you eat it all in one sitting you're gonna hate yourself for the rest of the day you eat half of it you take the other half home with you and then you got dinner as well so we're spending about. 30 bucks on gas, you know, but it what I mean? still comes out cheaper, but it comes out cheaper <laughs> than going right down to the, to the Whataburger or whatever, you know, the, the fast so, food. So as convenient with convenience would have it, we live closer now, but no lie today because we had some like activity, like contractors in the house. We uh, like the kids were going to come home after school and like, we just really weren't trying to be at the house and all that. So we asked Elliot, right? My daughter, where she wanted to go eat and that that was her response she wanted to eat at the food court at the mall so that's where we went and that's when it dawned on me that that was happening so normally when we go like during a, during the weekend or something like that we split and fill ourselves we split one box and fill ourselves that's me and oh, katie yeah. not, not not the kids they always chick-fil-a it but yeah me and katie split one box and completely fill ourselves up um and tonight we we splurged and got a box a piece and i was out like you know Eighteen dollars or something like that. But anyways, yeah, with, with with the Chick Fil A, eighteen yeah, bucks got, with the Chick Fil A <laughs> included. Yeah, we got seventeen dollars worth of Chick Fil A, and me and Katie were stuffed on that. No, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we got we each got a box, but yeah, we ended up coming home with a whole box that she's gonna take for lunch because that's just how much food's in it. And yeah. I'm not kidding. I, I'm maybe exaggerating a little bit, but like it's probably ten bucks versus nine, which is outrageous. Oh yeah, because like you, you can't even get like a Big Mac with a medium sized fry and one packet of ketchup for for ten bucks. Oh, that they're asking for the the sauces is where they screw you. This is that was yeah. that was the most devastating thing to a high school student was when the they, pinion, huh? dude, whenever they started charging an extra fifty cents for each ranch or whatever, soy, so, uh, sweet and sour sauce. Cause like, bro, we, that was our thing, man. We would get out of high school and we would go over to the Mickey D's cause it was in the middle of everyone's houses basically. And we would go up there and it, you know, you, you get some nugs or like some hot and spices and a fry and it's like four bucks. And then you're like, yeah, but I want some ranch. And then it turns into $6 and I'm like, what? Yeah. What the hell dude? All, I could have gotten two more to, Sammies. They're always trying to stick it to the adolescent man. I get it. They are. We man. had a, it's a rough life out there for a 16 year old. Ours was JIB, but that was back when the chicken sandwich was a dollar and we would, we would get three. This is disgusting. Now that I think about it, we would get three ranches and those are the little, the little cups, yeah, the box. Yeah. Three ranches per chicken sandwich. So probably they were losing their ass. Yeah, I know you put Good two God. on and you do three. You do some dipping with the other. We were basically eating ranch with like a, like a side of chicken and buttered bun. You but, were, yeah. The, it was a ranch meal. Uh, yeah, it was. A, it patty. was. You know how they have like a tomato soup with a grilled cheese? It was kind of like that, but ranch and a chicken sandwich. 
Um, anyways, that's probably why they started implementing rules. I mean, it wasn't obviously just us. So but, it was uh, y'all. Yeah. It was your fault. You ruined it for, for us. I mean, no, this this was taught to us. This was passed down from generations well above me. But, <laughs> oh, okay. um, yeah. the chi- you know, because you could get a chicken sandwich and three ranches for like a dollar eight. Jesus. And a, wa- and a water cup, obviously. Everybody was getting oh, a water yeah, dude. Cup. Oh, yeah. You go in after playing some b-ball with your boys outside of the school. You know yeah. what I mean? And then you, you run in there, get a, well, for us, it was a, a hot and spicy. Ask for a water cup. Don't tell anybody. You just throw Sprite in that bad boy. I was gonna say we you would know. fifty fifty. We would fifty fifty water and surge because it just kind of looked like a tinted water and it wasn't as bubbly. Fifty fifty, bro. What are you doing watering down surge? Well, you shouldn't drink it fully. You know, full all the way leaded. You know what just, I mean? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta dial it back. <laughs> you gotta unlead it a little bit. Yeah, you gotta unlead that surge. So we would fifty fifty in that water cup with that surge in that water and from a distance it just kind of looked like shitty tap water which was probably what we were getting anyway yeah it's so, like drinking straight syrup if you don't water it down it's almost yeah. like drinking uh drinking mcdonald's sweet tea if you don't if you don't half and half it now Whew. oh yeah you know what i mean i would say canes is way, that way sometimes too but i think all of them are just kind of oversweet um I think I got some at a church's one time that was just the sugar mixture because it was damn near clear. But golly, it was like it was like Cairo syrup, you know, that you cook with. Oh my it was God. like that. I spooned most of it. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't realize I ordered a, a, a sugar shake. Yeah. Yeah, it's just. A... <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Did you leave a cup of Vaseline in my to go bag? <laughs> did you, sir? Did you order the large corn syrup? Is that what you? Is that what you wanted? Somebody murdered a Stretch Armstrong right here in my plastic to-go bag. <laughs> oh, God, the burps are, are pretty gnarly, man. They're good. And I here's the other thing, too. There's no fall off for me. I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't updated my rating from my first sip, but there's no fall off for me. I enjoy it equivalent to what I did uh, when we first cracked them. Yeah, uh, I, I, I concur. It's still enjoyable, I would say. I guess I'm still I'm still on the up curve of uh, I I haven't hit the point of diminishing return on. Yeah, I I wanted to say this earlier and I forgot to, but uh, normally during an episode I drink about two, uh, two two cans. Um, Yeah. I if I had the ability to grab the third, I would grab the third for this episode. I agree, and I don't because it is you know it is three point seven ABV, so it it is very light, but it's going down very smooth and very quickly. Yeah. The other thing, I guess, that uh, to the audience that listens, we should say like, when you drink this, you whatever you think from looking at the outside of the can or from what we've described it is not what you're gonna get, and you're gonna you I, I think that you would enjoy it, but you're like I don't, you can't put your finger on why. It's odd that I like the way it tastes. Does yeah. that make sense? Like I yeah. in my mind it doesn't make sense why I'm enjoying it, but I am. Um and so as you drink it you're like I don't think I'm supposed to like you get this weird not sticky feeling, not like oh I'm being played by a used car salesman feeling, but you get this weird overarching feeling of why am I enjoying this? So just let it happen. Let it overcome you. Let it take you. Yeah. It feels a little bit wrong. It does it, feel a little wrong, but it also feels oh so right. Oh yeah, when a Stesty you know feels mean? right, whoo! <laughs> yeah, I love the feel of a good Stesty, man. Oh man, <laughs> you know what I mean? I love the flavor. Gotta love you don't that want flavor. The, you don't want the Stesty to have power over you, but whoo, it's gonna give it a shot. Sometimes it'll just slap you in the face, you know. When you're least expecting it, <laughs> yeah. Just, just, <laughs> I can't go any further with that. I gotta stop. No, gotta stop. I'll eventually, I'll eventually run dry, but I haven't given up yet. Um, well, there was there was another thing too that uh, I mean, kind of somewhat related to uh, the fact that uh, the the famous walk or whatnot has never changed, right? Yeah, and uh, ties back into the can a little bit here, but. Man, a good tractor, man. There's so many oh. people out there, so many people out there that 
you know, th- there's newer, there's new like uh, improvements to them and everything, obviously, but you find somebody who's really into tractors, man, and they love the classics. They don't, you know what I mean? That they're just, they're just good. They run so great I, still. This is the way I think about it. And I kind of explained it a little <laughs> to you, but the way I think about it is this. Like obviously they they in, they uh, manufactured way more vehicles than they did um, tractors, but to that point, um, the volume of vehicles from let's say like the '60s to the mid '80s that are on the road in comparison to like what was manufactured is minuscule to tractors of that era, and here's why: because you know we talk about inflation impacting everything. A tractor never loses its value. The example that I give is there's somebody right now in like a shitty ass rotting pole barn that's looking at like some generic ass 1970s case with no tires on it, no block, the seats rusted out, half the paint's gone, it doesn't come with parts, hasn't started in 30 years, and they're going, I mean, this is solid, I'll take it. This is great, I'm going to take it because this is a good tractor like that whether that's the model they grew up with because they were farming or whether it's just because like what it's capable of is all they need a lot of people size tractors too they're like oh well this one wasn't big enough or hey ooh, that's a little too much tractor for me right Mm -hmm. just based on what it's capable of i just find that there's so many and an ongoing generation i thought it was something that was like bygone right older folks believed in tractors but they're even in my generation every generation there's folks that still find extreme value in older tractors and not just because they're older it's not like oh i want to restore this some people do for sure but it's they're like taking a 1970s or 60s model tractor and using it every day as their workhorse it's not like they're like, oh, I want to restore it and put it in a, a museum. They're like, no, I'm going to slap some tires on it, fill it up, make sure she starts, and she's going to rock and roll every day. Right. Like, it's yeah. just crazy to me. Like, the people that – there, there's a, a larger volume of people that find value in a good tractor regardless of age versus any vehicle, in my opinion. Yeah, and well, and to add on to that a little bit, like, even, even the, like, classics that you do see on the road, the classic cars mm-hmm. – Nobody is buying those for the utility of them anymore. No, like, like it's you all do, like show. you do an old tractor. You know, That's you right. buy it's all for the look or the style or the feel of it. You know, or or the nostalgia, depending on you know when you grew up or whatnot. But, um, yeah, it, no one's no one's going out like you said. And there's probably a few out there that are you know restoring them to to oh, yeah, showcase them or whatnot. Should. But but more so, they're going out and buying them and restoring them to use them on on their farm and it's because man it doesn't get any simpler than that you want to know what it is quite honestly i bet it's because they're a lot easier to fix if something does go wrong possibly and then i also (laughs) think about and and this is not a stereotype but like think about the individual that is that is interested in purchasing a tractor it's not a joey sports car guy that's gonna throw throw it up on a shelf or that's going to pull up in a crowd and want somebody to look at his car or wants that as a symbol of status. It's a guy going, well, I've got X to accomplish and I only have this money. And so I know I'm familiar with this. I can work on this. I grew up with this. That's what I'm going to get. You know what I mean? So it's a respectable thing all the way around. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, there are people that drive them though. You know what I mean? Oh, no. You mean tractor wise or Oh yeah. You mean like as a commuter? Like yeah. just into the into the office? Yeah, if the office isn't a field? I'm sure there's I'm sure there's towns out there that somebody bought a tractor and restored it and they're just driving it around town. Oh yeah, there's like uh, parades and then obviously there's prized possessions. I'm sure that there's I mean, I don't even like... mean for parade. I'm talking about like just straight up that's their daily driver. They just hop on and they go to the store in their tractor. Listen, you know? if 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 your town makes it capable to um just recreationally commute to work on a tractor without somebody calling you out, that is the last remaining remnants of any town USA. 
in my opinion, right? <laughs> we all everybody preaches about any town USA. You see it being spoofed in all these sitcoms and like everybody's searching for it. It doesn't exist anymore unless you can commute on a farm mall every morning to the local gas station to pick up donuts and coffee. And when you walk out, not a single person asks you why you're on a tractor or makes comment of what condition it's in. That's or, the only any town USA that's left. Yeah. Or nobody's passing you going around you, flipping you the bird. No. And get off the street, they're just, bro. They're, they're just comfortable going your pace because they're just being able to drive through town. Like that's, yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's also probably because they're not they're not passing you because they're also on a tractor. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, oh. which which really eliminates a, a very long list of excuses you could make when you get to work late. Why were you like John? Uh, John was on the tractor in town. You also, sir, are on a tractor in town. So did you leave late? What's the problem? <laughs> no, see, what happened was I threw it into high gear, but I got caught behind him and he was just cruising. Also, I was pulling something, so <laughs> as a tractor normally is, just yeah. hitched to something. My, uh, I don't, I don't, I know nothing about tractors really, but my, my, my back hinge broke and the rake was down. You know what I mean? I couldn't go much faster. Yeah, three point split and the hydraulics won't keep her up. Just <laughs> that. I don't know, man. I'm just saying, like. You, very rarely are you going to run across a group of people that under like you're going to run across a group of people that understand cars that are going to be like, oh, I don't care for this or I don't care for that. Very rarely are you going to run across a group of people that understand tractors that aren't going to look at one tractor and go, well, I mean, they had this figured out and it's worth this. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they're always just going to be like, listen. Life is way shittier without that in my life. It's not my favorite tractor. I don't care for them. However, I can't do this on my own. This yeah. this necessitates my ability to uh, survive. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I see a lot of, um, well, I say a lot, not, not really like a ton. It's not like I pull up every social media app and it's the first thing I see. But every yeah. now and then, uh, I see these videos of these, uh, now they're obviously more modern uh, tractors and equipment and stuff but it's like of the like the cotton picking ones you know and like the uh like the uh berry ones the corn ones the corn ones blow my mind or the tomato like a, ones have you like seen a the combine a combine or a harvester or yeah yeah, yeah. like like okay. harvesters right they're yeah. obviously harvesting all the things but the tomato one blows my mind have you seen this one I have not. I'm pr I'm pretty sure it's on a tractor. I, I don't think it's in like a facility anywhere, but it drives and it it plucks the freaking tomatoes off and they like shoot across or like shoot, you know, down or across like a like a hole or yeah. a gap and there's like these little hands on it and yeah. it it looks at the tomatoes and if it's the wrong color, it smacks them out of the way okay, and puts them so somewhere else. That might be in a like a plant, but I I would not doubt that there's a technology that already exists in the field because they the way that they can sort, the way that they can pluck, the way that they can size stuff, the shoots, the way they distribute, it's crazy. Like yeah, the the technology now with tractors is absolutely outrageous, and their value is astronomically yeah, high astronomical. even before. Even before inflation, which I can't imagine what they are now, they're astronomically oh, yeah. high. Um, yeah, hundreds of thousands of dollars, like ridiculous amounts of money. I would say, like, probably, some yeah. of them get oh, some, some of them get to the three quarter to the full mill point. Yeah, I would, I would, yeah, Maybe I would imagine more. so. Like, uh, I, I don't know. It's just like one of those things. Like, I really enjoy. <laughs> This, this makes me sound like such a freaking nerd, but like, I really enjoy the, uh, there's these people that have YouTube channels and all they do is like go around and mow people's lawns. Oh yeah. I love Dude, it. Dude. It's one of the most sad. It's like that and power washing, right? They're like two of the most satisfying things to watch be done or even sometimes do yourself. I used to love it if it was, if it didn't take me freaking five hours to do it, you know, but, yeah. but that like those, uh, farming videos of the like watching the combines pluck pluck crap and wrap it all up is the same satisfaction so oh, 100%. i can imagine that's one of the ones that's more satisfying doing yourself than watching 
because it's yeah. it's such a, it's like on such a large scale like that. You know what I mean? It, oh, I would say if it wasn't endless, <laughs> I mean, I know, I, and also too, that's their job. Like we enjoy it because it's like awesome, and we nerd out to it. Yeah, but I'm yeah. sure that that's fair. They sit on a combine for nine months a year. It's miserable, but. Um, yeah, I, I go down those rabbit holes too. There was a, I think it's called Happy Valley. Again, I'll make the plug here. I think it's called Happy Valley Hay or something. But it was just this dude that worked this hay rake, dude. And it was just, it was like an art to see him pull this hay rake and then they would pull it up into these wind rows and then somebody would come. And like, I've bailed a little bit of hay, but like these dudes are like artists, man. Like artists. Yeah. And to watch them do it on like a massive scale. And obviously they do it as a profession, but um dude i could watch it for hours and it'd be to the point where katie would be like like have you not seen this and i was like not this field and she was like yeah but it's all the same field and i'm like no this one's got a dog leg in it so what is he gonna do with that you know what i mean how is that gonna work that's got to be so yeah. much more difficult how's he gonna pick that up because obviously the cutter did not do a very good job so he's gonna have to find a way without stopping to kick that into that windrow and so yeah i i nerd out to stuff like that all the time um yeah i wish I don't think, you know, the tractor as a technology is never going to go away. Um, it can't. No, it can't. Um, I don't think. It'll, unless they make somehow figure out how to make drones do it. But like, poss even possibly, then, it's got to be more efficient to do it with a tractor. Well, I just think about the elements. Like, I, again, nothing against a drone. I'm sure you can build them like uh, impenetrable we'll circle back on if I pronounce that correctly. But anyways, um, just like just super rugged or whatever. But like, again, there's tractors from the sixties right now that like, you can sink them in a pond for eight months and then they're just like, fuck it. They come yeah. back. Yeah. They yeah. just, they never go, they never mess up, man. But I guess that's why they get the premium price tag though. You know, that is, and it's the durability. Also, also too, it's kind of like when, um, you know, we've talked about this before. It's kind of like the difference between a female buying clothes and male buying clothes. Like I buy a pair of jeans. I will wear them till they're physically incapable of being worn. And I think that's how the tractor is. People buy vehicles all the time and then they're like, eh, it's got 150,000 miles on it. I don't like the color anymore. They buy something else. Somebody buys a tractor and they're like, this will be the tractor for the next six generations of my family. Yeah. Like they, <laughs> they're never going to let it die. I'd like to say I don't think that necessarily is the difference between a female buying clothes and a male buying clothes, but well, you know, I'm saying you know I, I, th I think just, there I think there's definitely females that buy clothes and say I'm gonna wear this until I can't anymore, and there's also males that buy stuff and they're like ah, I wore that once I'm good. All right, well, um, I don't know what volume of the audience you're looking to protect, but apparently my metaphor was lackluster and or offensive, so. Nah, I'm I'm just saying, I, I know some people who, you know, I know some men who also do that. Men? Well, boys, Question mark. You know? I'm joking. I'm joking. Boys, that's more okay. Of a there we, go. we can say something like that. Uh, man, I have already finished both these cans and we haven't usually I, I don't finish it until literally we're like logging off. Dude, I'm on can three because, uh, you know, they're lighter, right? So not That's much lighter. alcohol in them. That's probably what makes them a little more drinkable, but they're super refreshing. I want to go back for more and, you know, they're not super heavy. Also, too, maybe it's just because we're coming off a week of good God, I don't want to go back to the glass. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's probably helping a little bit, but I don't think it's swaying much. Uh, I'm swaying my opinion very much um, on the beer itself. I think it's been pretty solid. Uh, and it is time to get into the WWYBD. Uh, oh, you should go first. Okay. Well, I was going to say you go oh, first you have... because really? I, I haven't had something click in my mind yet. And I feel like I need a little bit of as, as much time as I can buy. Oh, okay. So my WWYBD on this one is for me, this is a chore beer. This is a chore beer. And I'm not saying that just because it's tractor juice, but I'm saying it because obviously I'm not in the presence and or of a tractor. Um, but occasionally, like when we got a full day's like, this is going to be such a slap in the face for guys that actually have to deal with tractors or hard labor. Um, but we have like a full day's dearly situation where we're out cutting grass, we're clearing pastures, maybe we're working on a food plot, filling feeders moving um, stands, helping guys out, whatever it is, right? Setting up camp, 
um, split and fire, with, like basically deer lease setup, but in the summertime. We do a lot of that prep work in the summertime when we when we prep for deer lease in the winter. This is what I would choose because, in my opinion, it's already going to be a tough long day where I should be hydrating. Let's think about this. It's it's going to be a long. There, it's one of those things where you're in full clothing, long sleeve shirt, pants because you're walking through briars and trimming trees and cutting shit down to clear uh, shooting rows and stuff like that. Um, so you should be hydrating. This I, it's the most flavor in the least amount of alcohol, where I could probably drink a lot of them and enjoy it all day. Yeah, I'm kind of getting yeah. like biggest bang for my buck in flavor light enough to where i can hydrate in between but i'm not weighed down with all the weight of the alcohol um so this is a chore beer for me like a, a deer lease chore beer mid to late summer um i will say my opposite wwybd i don't see myself drinking this when it's cold i don't know why that is but i don't no, see myself it's not a cold time beer it's definitely a, a warm season beer yep. uh let's say warm to hot you know, I can this drink a, it in the heat of the summer and the warmth of the spring. Yep, a summertime dearly chore beer all day drinker a for me. A summertime sipper. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, you had you had whenever you were describing that, I was like, "Ooh, deer lease!" I could definitely see myself bringing bringing a sixer or or two sixers to the deer lease, and uh, you know having some while we're working, having some that night as well. But uh, I'm not going to say that. I am going to say for me, this is like a, I'm on, I I wouldn't say like a, like a vacation, but like a weekend getaway kind of right. And uh, we show up to, you know, whether it be like my house or, or or an Airbnb or something. Right. We show up, I wake up that morning and someone has just freshly cut their grass. And that now the, the branding of the can might in, be influencing me a little bit, but one of the neighbors has freshly cut the grass and I roll out onto the front porch at like 10 AM, 9 AM. And I crack one of these bad boys open, get me a nice whiff of that fresh cut grass and throw it back. That's I can, I can see myself doing that when I, when I taste this beer. I also alarmingly have probably done that and can see myself doing that with this beer. <laughs> However, I must make the comment that you're basically utilizing this beer to explore and completely engulf and digest the fruits of someone else's labor. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I would, I would like, I could say that maybe I woke up and, and cut the grass as well, but when I'm thinking about it myself, I'm thinking that maybe the neighbor cut their grass and oh, I strolled dude. out onto the front porch. If I'm thinking about it, I would enjoy it way more if the neighbor cut the grass and I just reap the benefits of all of that. Yeah. Like, because the, just... I, cause the, when I'm, when I take a sip of this thing, I can, I can envision myself smelling fresh cut grass as weird as that sounds. You know what I mean? No. Dude, there's a, there's an earthy, um, you know, earlier we talked about or in the past, we talked about sack dust. This is not, <laughs> ooh, Stessie well, okay. and sack dust well, in the same know, conversation. But you but, know, though, when you were describing the deer lease, I tasted sack dust. Yeah, I know. That was crazy. Really so I tasted I'm not gonna sack put, dust while I was sipping the Stessie, man. I'm not going to put Stessie and sack dust in the same sentence, but I will say this. Um, I do get a, I wonder if that's why they call it tractor juice. The earthiness to it. I, yeah. I mean, I know that obviously they, they linked it back to the story for branding purposes. Probably they linked it back to the story of the Czech farmers and it's of old prohibition style, but it does have a, a seasonal grass, hay, sack dust, sour to it, which I like. Yeah. yeah. I can, I can. I can really taste it, you know, the more I drink. Um, so that's good. Uh, I think it's, it's like a, for anyone who might have experienced this just because, again, I went to the mall today, but it's a non-sour, sour style Pilsner 
of old school origin that kind of has a non-sweet wheatgrass play if you're familiar with the Jamba Juice. I've never had that a was Jamba down Juice, time. so... Holy shit. Well, <laughs> nobody goes to the, the sticks, mall anymore. Bro. I live out in the sticks, brother. I drive my yeah. tractor to the mall. It takes me three days to get there. That's why you understood sack dust, green grass, and stesties. That's why I also understood the impact that inflation has on me going to the mall to eat lunch. Is, I get it. Dude, I love when we can tell a complete story. That's what I appreciate. That's what it's all about. Speaking of story, I need you to tell me your story on your ratings of this bad boy. All right. So I'll kick it off. Entry. Um, I go back and forth between a three or four. Like it's, it's very, I know that this, this is counterintuitive to all of the, um, the guidance I've given thus far, but it doesn't hit real great out of the gate for me. It's like middle of the road, but I did place it at a four. However, once it gets in, I had it at a five. I wouldn't say six, but I have it at a five. Body, I have it at a four. Um, honestly, just because the unfiltered for me usually is a little bit of a problem, but I think it does give it some thickness that being such a light beer, it wouldn't have otherwise. Color, I have a three. You know how I feel about filtering. The filtering doesn't really bother me in this case, but it's super light. I want it to have a little more of a tinge. Um, bitterness, I have it at a three. I think it could have a slight more for being a Pilsner, so it's middle of the road. Acidity, I do have it at a four. Fizz, I have it at a four. Overall, I had some great burps. They were great throughout. Was it the best burp? No, they were all enjoyable. Um, they didn't fall off, but I've had better burps. So it brings me to a total of a 27. Um, mm. Okay, uh, we have a, we have a few different points on this one, but we did have some at the beginning here. I agree on your your entry and your aftertaste. I have entry at a four, um, kind of middle of the road, like you said. I could yeah. kind of went back and forth. Uh, aftertaste, I had it a five because there is that skunkiness that comes in on the aftertaste, so it kind of brings the pilsner into it. Not to cut you off, but it comes in as if it's nothing, and then finishes full flavored. Yes. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Really. Uh, body, I had it at a three. Um, okay. it, it's, it, you know, it kind of yeah. throws me off. Yeah, it throws me off a little yeah. bit, a little flavor wise. Um, but it is, it is good though. Uh, color, I had it at a three as well. Uh, there was a little, you know, the cloudiness kind of threw me off a little bit. But again, that's because it's unfiltered. It's just not what I expect out of a Pilsner typically. Uh, but I've never had an unfiltered one, so that one, that one could change in the future at some point. Um, bitterness, though, I had it a five. I thought it was pretty spot on bitterness wise. Uh, maybe a little bit less than I expect, but very good still. Uh, acidity, I had at a three because of a, the little bit of hinty fruitness that's in that body, kind of. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, that, that just threw that score down a little bit, but fizz, man, we were pretty far off on fizz. I think the fizz on this bad boy is a six. I think it's a perfect, really? I think it's a perfect fizz, uh, from what I expect out of a 3.7 fills, uh, Pilsner, um, the burps started very quick and they never, they never seceded, right? Mm -hmm. They never seceded. They never left. Um, and they they weren't bad. I mean, I, I never had one that was one of those deep guttural burps that was horrible tasting. You know, uh, they were all they were all reminiscent of the great aftertaste that this thing put forward. So, or maybe not forward, but you know, after the fact. So that brings my uh, score to a 29. So we were only two points off, but the end right there got a little, uh, there was a little difference in the thought processes. Oh, man, if there's anything, sorry, I don't want to pause to take a moment, but obviously, um, us, yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't disagree with anything. Um, also, again, it's how you're comparing one to the other. One right. thing I would say on the bot, like the points you make on body in the back of my mind, and maybe this is like a, um, maybe my situation is flawed, but when you came out of the gate with 
3.7. So I took that into factoring, not to a Pilsner, but I factored that into my whole argument. Coming out of the gate with 3.7, 12 IBUs, I was like, what what could 12 IBUs and 3.7 give me body, right? So I factored that into, this would probably be, to me, probably like a two body. But if I, mm. I think about that in regards to this, I'm like, well, for 13.7, 12 IBUs, plus the sour, the unfiltered, I'll give it a four. So mm. even in my own scale of interpretation, I'm faulted by the details that I know about the beer. You know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. You got to consider everything whenever you're really trying to give a recommendation, which obviously from this episode, both of us recommend this one. If you can find it, the Stesti Brewing Company Tractor Juice is a solid, solid beer. I will be buying again, 100%. This is not a fridge sitter, as you would say. No, not a fridge sitter at all. Yeah. I would also, too, and not that I'm this kind of guy, like I would always immediately, if I had these in the fridge... I would say, I know we joked about like the Porter thing. I wouldn't really offer that to anybody, but if somebody came to the house, I'd be like, Hey, you got to try this. Yes. And also I would, I would overcome the cliche of it being called tractor juice. Cause it's kind of a little bit cheesy, but mm-hmm. I'd be like, yeah, just no offense to the branding. It's great, but disregard that drink the beer and tell me what you think of it. Yeah. It's also a great entry beer into a craft style. I think uh, if you want to kind of, get your get your toes in the water you know or or maybe a friend uh, has never had like something crafty uh this is a good good entry level beer yeah. to maybe maybe start your journey if you're interested agreed all right well we've gotten to that point in the podcast where i'm going to tell you to go follow us on social media on twitter and tiktok at off the tap pod and on instagram facebook and youtube at off the tap podcast so struggled a little bit to run it in because I didn't put it together till two seconds ago. But in the style of Mike Myers in So I Married an Axe Murderer, some slam poetry. It might sound like oil, euphemism of sorts, the light taste of yellow with feel. Before beer was great and legal of taste, the value juice blesses those less with more. <laughs>